Hi, I'm Miller, and welcome to another Miller's Game Room video. This video is going to be more of a semi unstructured ramble about Acker Plus and their whole support for the Nintendo Switch and why I firmly believe this is going to change in the next couple of years. First of all though, if you like the channel and want to support it, like, comment, subscribe, algorithm boosting stuff, etc. Thank you so much. So if you don't know who Acker Plus are and if you're on my channel, you probably already do. They are the, one of the biggest visual companies known and have made a lot of RPGs, mainly the Utah Romano series and a lot of people expected Utah and Imports to turn up on the Switch among other things, but that's not happened. There has been a couple of spin-offs called Adokapon Up and Gizoku Tantai no Zuri. I talked more about these games in a separate Where Do You Start Utah Romano video, so I'll leave a link to that because they're very interesting games in their own right, but nothing else has turned up and it's kind of been frustrating me a lot personally as a kind of the frustrated fan kind of thing which is basically why I'm making this video so, so not only offload all my thoughts but also so I can stop bringing it up as much until we start getting a formal announcement or comments. I love this company's games I think they're great but I can't really recommend them to a lot of people because at the moment they're primarily only on PC which isn't really acceptable considering they're long line of console heritage. So let's start with the question, why haven't they supported the Nintendo Switch? Well, there is not much evidence to signal an, an exact reason, although it is possible to kind of put a theory together. So let's start with this limited evidence. The first thing that came up in relation to the Switch in terms of an explicit comment from Acre Plus staff is from the current COO and former CEO, Nao Yoshimokawa, he said in a 2018 interview where many Japanese developers were asked their thoughts about what they're paying attention to, among other things, Nao Shimakawa said that he was paying attention to the Nintendo Switch, its titles and its fan base, and he's interested in seeing how it will go. And this was back in 2018 when the Switch was still new, it was still finding its Japanese developers were yet to fully understand how the audience would work and how it would fully manifest. That's the only like explicit acknowledgement of the Switch I've seen from Nao Yoshimikawa publicly. This then brings us to the 2022 Monochrome Mobius interview in Famitsu, which was like last April, and this translator translated it. It was before the PC release, and bear in mind the PC release came out worldwide day and date, but not the console release. That only came about a month ago at the time of recording this video. So there's one sentence in a particular answer about the story that people concluded that meant that they weren't interested in making any more games for portable platforms, which is a bit erroneous, but I'll get to that. So let's start with the full, the full question and I'll pick out the part that's relevant. It's a work that puts Plus's name value to the ultimate test. What should we look out for in the story? In this game, Oshtor, who will eventually become known as a hero, meets a mysterious girl named Shunya and learns that his father, who was thought to be dead, is still alive. This leads to a grand story that he follows through on his journey to track down his father. If you listen carefully to all of the lines without skipping anything, it'll probably take more than 50 hours. We live in an era where you can play many kinds of games easily on smartphones, but that's exactly why I want this to be a game that one plays while sitting down and playing slowly. As I said earlier, Suga is writing the script for this story. As you probably know already, Suga has a long history of things he's written, and there are a lot of people who are fans of his stories. So if we wanted to make a game on a scale that we've never made before, we decided it would be best to leave the story entirely to Suga, and that the players would also want to read the story he's written. So just to clarify, Suga is the writer for the Utsuramino series and has also helped with a bunch of other Act Plus games. He's got a long history like a lot of these series veterans that are still at the company, including Nei Shimakawa. But the thing is, that sticks out and the quote that was used was about living in an era where you can play games on smartphones and why they, he wants this to be a game that people play in while sitting down and playing slowly. That's the quote that led people to think that Aquaplus aren't interested in developing for the Switch, which is an erroneous conclusion because, well, first off, the Nintendo Switch is not explicitly mentioned. There's also no question at all in the interview about Nintendo Switch. It's not mentioned at all, so there's nothing directly tying it together. Plus, also, the Switch isn't even a handheld-only console. It's a hybrid system. Even if a lot of people think it's a handheld, like, I know in Japan, a lot of people primarily play it portably, but... It's still a home console, you can sit on the Switch, play an RPG for 50 hours docked, that logic doesn't quite make sense. But I think what it does signal 
is the need for an explicit answer and an explicit explanation because there is nothing to suggest it so people especially in the online vocal communities are going to be like hmm that's why that's the reason and you know, I'm making a video myself based on it so that's how limited the evidence is but I do have a theory as to what I think is going on and why I believe this is going to change. My theory relates back to what I said earlier about Falcom and Compile Heart. Well, not specifically them, but the fact that in 2018, they also were not fully aware of the Switch. They, they previously were quite law to PlayStation, like Falcom in particular. If it wasn't for them porting games to the PSP in the 2000s, they would have really struggled and possibly gone out of business when their PC distributor had to pull out on them when Zway 2 didn't sell well at all on PC, which that was like 2008, like PlayStation literally saved that company. And Compile Heart were always kind of loyal, like you could play all their fan service stuff on the Vita as well. That's another example. They didn't really think the audience was there for the Switch. Obviously they think differently now, but back in 2018, they thought PlayStation would still be a viable platform, but with the PS4 and later 5 fan base shrinking in Japan and overseas to an extent in terms of niche games, but not as much. They are basically now fully embraced the Switch and Aqua Plus are where Falcom and Compile Heart were in 2017 and 2018. The big difference though between Aqua Plus and those companies is Aqua Plus's comparatively lacking console presence, especially outside of Japan. So what this means is that Falcom and Compile Heart, they would have had the sales figures, their Switch port to kind of establish if it's there. Whereas Aqua Plus haven't done that. It's pretty widely established at this point in Japanese publisher circles that the Nintendo Switch is where your AA stuff will sell. You can get anything on the consoles as long as it's rated, within reason. It's where you can basically release your stuff and get the vast audience possible from the Vita fan base to absorb their love for niche games and physical editions, but also the mainstream in Japan as well, even if you're not in those specific demographics. This is something that their localization partners, everyone they've worked with, are probably telling them this. Shirovune, even though they're a PC publisher, have been translating the games for them, they've probably been telling them that. NIS America, who've done the console ports and have, were very much early on the Switch's life. The Sky 5 Complete became one of their best selling games. Sega as well, who even after they stopped localizing their games in English, they still were localized Uta Romano in Chinese and Korean, so they're still working with them. And they were likely all telling them, you need to bring your stuff to the Switch, and they are refusing. And their development partners, Sting and Tamsoft, who also make games for the Switch, will also turn them this as well. And Aqua Plus were just kind of didn't see it and they just were not willing to take the risk because they didn't feel they needed to. They haven't accepted the reality yet that the Switch is the console to be at. Like a lot of these Japanese developers, were ha they're happy in their own bubble. They need to be nudged very slowly, especially before they're forced to. Which brings us to why I think this is going to change. So for those who don't know, the Dungeon Traveler series was ported from the PS Vita to PC. Specifically 2, 2.2 2, and the first one, which at the time of this video being recorded hasn't come out yet. If you didn't know, don't worry, they are... I still consider them de facto Vita exclusive because they were banned from Steam and are currently at the time of recording only on Joran, which is a notoriously bad DRM platform. And also, the Steam ban is there, it's here to stay, it's not going to get reversed, and the reason why is because Steam have no incentive to fix it, not just because of their monopoly power, but also because a lot of the really vocal anti-localization crowd are so toxic politically, they will never be taken seriously, so they can be ignored. But what it has created is there's no exposure for these ports and if Aqua Plus are potentially blocking or restricting what games get put on other stores which at the time of this video because there's been a silence and months about it people have been speculating so it is a reasonable conclusion to suspect but I think what's happened is it's taking Aqua Plus a long time to accept that they need to actually port their stuff to the Switch because the only way they're going to get around the lack of exposure caused by the Steam ban is to port them to another platform altogether. Steam has such a huge monopoly hold on the PC market that even if you got your game onto every other storefront, including the likes of GOG, it's just like even if you do on every single store, they're not going to sell as well. And a lot of these other storefronts that they're putting them on are adult game stores like Jast and Manga Gamer, like 
Considering how much ACK Plus have been working to distance themselves from adult content, I don't think they want to touch those kind of stores, but that is definitely speculation on my part. They were still even pushing the Jiren ports even back when they were saying they were looking to other stores. It's clear there's been a bit of a process trying to get ACK Plus to be like, look, the sales aren't good enough, you need to port them, and I think that's what's happened. And also because they want to make Dungeon Travelers free, and it will never happen if they don't port the games. It's as simple as that. The whole banning of a obscure fan service game series, which you can buy on the PS Vita, hence the ban should have not happened just purely because they were rated for consoles in Japan and in the West. What I think has happened is these Dungeon Travelers Switch ports, I believe, are already happening as a result. But games are co developed by Sting. Sting are handling their ports of PC. I played through White Haven 1, they are in the credits. It can be done. And what will happen is I believe these ports will come out most likely next year. Multi language Switch ports in Japan if not overseas of a localizer, they will sell really well because the Switch, especially if it's physical, people will buy them. They will express surprise at something that was pretty fucking obvious to everyone else. Think back to like Atlas and Persona exclusivity to PlayStation, which was never a formal thing, but because they wanted it to be that way. And suddenly be like, okay, now we can actually put all our stuff out. So here's all the more language ports. Let's do Utah Mono. Let's do White Album 1. Let's do everything else we've got coming which likely does include white album 2 and the two heart 2 releases but that definitely is speculation it's a bit too late for them to capitalize fully on the switch fan base because like people widely expect by this time next year for the switch 2 to be out or about to release like it's expected the console will be replaced soon considering the switch 2 will likely be backwards compatible with the original nintendo switch what they can do is to start put releasing these games now and set the groundwork to fully capitalize on the Switch 2 fanbase. A lot of Japanese developers, like big names like Capcom and Sega, most likely regret not fully supporting the Switch early in its life. Even the smaller ones like Falcon and now Act Plus are like, oh shit, we gotta catch up. But that is like this is this is the objective reality. They need to accept it. I believe they have accepted it. It's frustrating. I don't like it. It's not the biggest problem in the world, but it's just... I logically understand it, but the whole mental gymnastics like these people can do to just not support a platform when it's pretty obvious the market is there and they're just not prepared to take the risks and actually fully gather data and not just spin-offs. And there's still plenty of time because the Switch will probably end up being like the PlayStation 2, where the PlayStation 2 was still getting like Japanese games only in Japan as late as like 2010 and 2011 and the PSP was 2015. They've got plenty of time still to put them on the Switch, but now because the Switch is such a global system, here in the West, we will get them too, even if it's digital only. So I'm going to stop today. Thank you so much for listening to this little quick ramble video. Also, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Are you interested in any games from Aqua Plus? Would you pick them up if they came to the Nintendo Switch? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, please like, comment, subscribe, algorithm boosting stuff, notification bell, donation in the description, etc, etc. Thank you so much, bye bye.